So in this series, we're just about to dive into the part where we start installing a web server and seeing how we can set up an application on our web servers. And this involves a few things, like installing a web server, of course, but then also setting up the portions we need to run a web application. And what I want to do here is just cover the moving parts that you need when you are hosting a web application. So I like to divide this into three actors, three parts that exist on your server. And of course, in the picture here, we have four parts. The first part is a client, and the client is not part of your web server. It's just whatever is sending in a web request to your server. So that could be your web browser or someone's API call from their own code. Whatever it is, it's usually some sort of HTTP call. But on the server side, we have three parts, and you might be familiar with two of them, but the third here is kind of hidden and glanced over, but it is definitely necessary. But the very first part is the web server, the thing that accepts HTTP requests. And then we have a gateway, and then we have the application code. And the gateway sits between the web server and the application code, and it's the thing that converts a web request into something that your code can read and work off of. So in between here, we have HTTP and FastCGI and WSGI. These are just protocols that talk between these different parts. And I'll explain to that a little bit more in just a second. So like I mentioned, we have clients. A client might be something like a curl request that we see here in the code below, or a API call some other application makes, or just someone in their web browser going to your website. It sends an HTTP request to the server and something responds to it, something that can listen to HTTP requests and send a response. Now that is typically a web server, a web server such as Nginx or Apache, or if you have some kind of proxy, maybe an HTTP cache like Varnish or maybe a load balancer. But whatever you have installed is probably listening in port 80 or port 443 for HTTP requests and can respond to them. So in this series, we're just gonna talk about Nginx, but Apache can do all of this too. Nginx is just sitting there waiting for web requests for HTTP requests. And then it has configuration, which tells it to either pass that request onto something else to fulfill or to serve a static file itself or to proxy that request to some other server. Whatever it's configured to do, it's going to do. But the web server is the first thing that a web request hits when it reaches the server. Now, if you have an application set up, the web server is probably going to proxy a request off to your gateway. So a gateway is this thing that sits between a web server and your application code. And its job is to be able to convert a web request into something your code can read. So in PHP land, we have PHP FPM. That's the thing that is up and running and listening for requests from a web server. Now it doesn't read HTTP. Most of, some of these can, but most of these don't. So the web server, like Nginx, has to be able to convert that web request into something automatically. So for instance, Nginx can convert a web request to fast CGI, which is what PHP FPM is looking for. It's a protocol, it's a format of information. And Nginx is able to take a web request, convert it, or fill out the information needed for fast CGI, and then pass that off to PHP FPM. And then PHP FPM spins up processes, and those processes are just instances of your application code, or it's just a process that has PHP in it, and then that can read your PHP. PHP code. Whatever the specifics are there don't matter so much as knowing that PHP FVM is this thing that accepts a fast CGI request from Nginx or Apache and then runs your PHP code. All right, and then we have different things for different languages. So UWSGI is another example gateway, and there's more gateways that I have listed here. It's a common one for Python, but it actually can be used for other stuff like even PHP, but also Ruby. It can speak FastCGI or WSGI, which is its own protocol and some other ones, but it's the same setup. You have Nginx or Apache. Nginx can speak WSGI or FastCGI and pass the request off to this UWSGI program, and that in turn will spin up instances of a Python or Ruby or even PHP application and send that request on. Uh, for Python and Ruby, we also have Unicorn or G-Unicorn, once for Python, once for Ruby. They speak fast CGI. Oops, I have a typo there, but ignore that. They can speak fast CGI or even HTTP, so you can actually have Nginx just proxy an HTTP request to Unicorn, and then these do the same thing. It, it converts the request in a way that code can read, and then the code runs, your application code runs, and responds to it. And then we have some programming languages that actually don't really need a gateway because they can speak HTTP. So Node.js or Golang are two big examples of this where they actually can listen for HTTP requests themselves. Now with those, you don't technically even need a web server in the middle such as uh, Nginx or Apache, but typically you see them in front anyway so that they can do things like set cache headers or serve static files, things you don't necessarily want your Node.js or your Golang code to do. 
All right, so we talked about the client, and then we have our web server, and then we have a gateway, and then we talked about your web server, and then we talked about how your web server can pass requests off to your gateway, and the gateways send stuff into your code. So a gateway will typically be responsible for spinning up a process, which is really um, something like PHP or you know spinning up a process of Python or Ruby, and those in turn are reading your application code and doing stuff. So PHP might be plain old PHP, or it might be Laravel, or it might be Symfony, Ruby is probably Rails, but it could also be something like Rack. Python, it might spin up an instance of Python, which might be an instance of Django or Flask or whatever framework you're using for that. Node.js can be listening to whatever. You don't have to use a framework, but you might be using something like Express. Golang, again, you don't necessarily need to be using a framework, but it might be you're using some Gorilla components to listen to HTTP requests. Basically, every language you might code in probably has a way to run and fulfill web requests. And it's doing that because the gateway, whatever gateway is set up that a web server is proxying to, is set up in a way so that it knows how to spin up an instance of your application and run it. So in the upcoming videos, we're going to install Nginx. We're going to configure it to send requests to PHP FPM in our case. And then PHP FPM is going to be spinning up instances of our application. And we'll see that whole process where we see a client sending an HTTP request in, Nginx accepting that HTTP request, seeing that the file name ends in .php, so it knows it has to spin that off to PHP FPM. I'll show you how it converts to FastCGI, some of the stuff it does, and then we can see how PHP FPM is configured to run a PHP application.